I'm involved with the old Gaffers Association, and I'm now the trophy holder and the chairman of the branch down here. And they want me to zoom, and I've not been able to. You see. <laughs> Well, I, I've I've got to chair a Zoom meeting next week, so it's a good, right. you know, good so it's a good excuse, uh, you know, opportunity for me to the Beagles, which I'm involved with. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a this is a real good lesson. Yeah, it's after. more it's more difficult than I realised. It isn't just a question of switching the thing on. You right, but it's the whole concept. I mean, you, you I doubt whether you find fifty crew youngsters to sail on a Square rigger these days from the UK. <coughs> do not fear. I, no one gets away at press gang. So, update for Mike. Uh, an update for Captain Mark. But to start off with, I, I have an obsession about building a ship. Leave it aside. Um, long time in the future. It's just uh, would be nice. Let alone theory of change and all that. In the meantime, Mike, yeah, I yeah. have... Uh, in my possession, two of the doors of the Malcolm Miller. Two of the doors? Yes. The round, the round doors that came uh, off. Square. Uh, square the round. The uh, oh, sorry. It's a square on the Miller, wasn't it? Thank you very much. I know the brain cells are still there, Mike. <laughs> so However, you've Mike... Got, you've got two doors. Unknown to... I'll tell you where these doors used to be. When you got to the uh, were captain, you only had three doors either side on the Miller. Yes. When Mark started, there were four. Yes, there was a toilet. No. Oh no, you're right. You um, want to know? You, you seen the old lithographs? Yes. All the lithographs of the Malcolm Miller show four doors. Right. I'm making you think now. You spot a, you look at a lithograph of Malcolm Miller TSK2, and distinctly there is a forward door which used to go, uh, it's the one before the galley, well, it's no longer there, and used to be accessed to the PO's mess, Miller, right. and also access either side to go down the ladder either side, down right. below. Churchill down the middle, Malcolm Miller either side, yeah? Yes, yeah. When that was designed as such, which was very nice because cooks get pissed off with people going through the sodding galley. Of course. Good. The Malcolm Miller had a way in the lovely summer for the young boys and girls to go down below or into the PO's mess without annoying the catering crew. Yeah. Not only did it let ingress by human beings, they used to let in the North Sea. <laughs> At one refit, oh, uh, it may have been the 83 refit in London, Canary Wharf, back in the day. Mark half remembers these refits. The notorious Ken Groom, him, the gloomy one. Yes. Had been reassigned among much, um, think of any expletive, to be not the permanent chief officer of the lovely Sir Winston Churchill, which he had worked right. four or five years on, Mark remember, turning into a rusty bag of shit uh, into the shiny, shiny Sir Winston Churchill. During which time the Malcolm Miller was generally, uh, well, yeah, a bit manky. So the great and good decided that the only way to make sure that Malcolm Miller did not rust to bits, the rusty bucket, was to tell Ken Groom that you are now <laughs> going to be in charge of the Malcolm Miller. <laughs> To which end, the permanent crew of the Malcolm Miller, one were quite aghast with you. Oh, shit! This is uh, Ken Gates, engineer Nobby, Denby, all quite fearsome of the reputation of the gloomy one. Is that not quite right, Mark? Mark knows Ken Groom so much better. Yeah. Even Mark probably was running in fear sometimes of the gloomy one. <laughs> well, I I never, I don't think I ever sailed with Ken Groom. I didn't meet him. But I thought the funniest thing was in, I don't know which year, it was about 94, we were in Portsmouth doing a refit, both ships. We did two winters in Portsmouth. Yeah. And while the permanent crew were home one weekend, I opened up the Churchill through to the um, 
permanent crew accommodation and Bob Stevenson did the same on the Malcolm Miller. And when they came back on Monday, oh, um, George and Mike Stevens and everybody else couldn't believe they wouldn't speak to us for days, if not weeks, oh. because we opened up the accommodation. You were. Do you remember that? No, I wasn't there, but Mark, Mark might, yeah. Yeah. No, Mark wasn't there. No, I'd, 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 I'd long grown up and gone by then. Anyway, back to so the gloomy <laughs> one. Uh, the situation was that the water did come down uh, before our doors. Uh, the example being that the uh, half deck deck floor was just forever um, uh, wet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because of the water coming in. Uh, one thing that the gloomy one did was as he's looking at the deck after the liner was picked up, seeing all these attempts to patch up the deck, patch up the deck. So he got uh, number one sledgehammer and banged holes all over it. So now they have to fucking repair it properly. <laughs> However, that didn't quite work because water is still coming through those two doors. So the gloomy one took them off because remember, he was a, a, not that you know, Mike, but he was a very good carpenter. He yeah, actually started well, off... Yeah, he started off as a carpenter on the Ark Royal or something like that. Yeah, so, did, yeah. doors are taken off and the holes are welded up. Which stops the water going down through that bit. However, then the two doors go off the ship, heading towards the shed. And Josh Garner intercepts the gloomy and his gang, going... But Mr. Groom, what are you doing with those doors? Well, Josh, I'm going to come fucking up and put my word budding stove. <laughs> to which Josh goes, oh, Mr. Groom, you cannot do that. But what are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to take him home. Which he did. To his spare house in Bath and Wells. Oh, right, yeah. Josh used to have a spare house and a spare garage where it was always commented there's enough bits in there to start building a schooner. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, February last year, Josh called me and said, Tony Chan, now I'm selling my spare house and uh, obviously I've got things in the garage. Okay, we know, I know, yeah. Uh, and I need some ideas on what to do with the doors. Well, they've got bolts right, the, <coughs> right through them, so it's, uh, the best thing you could do is make a table out of them. No, someone else did that with, someone actually did that with a Sir Winston Churchill door. Oh, right. Pictures available. No, no, no. Anyway, I'm looking after them. Now, back to uh, my nuttiness to build a training ship. I'm building one on land. Right. Okay. At the Hillsy Lido, Portsmouth. Yeah. Um, over the last year, I've ended up as a trustee of the Hillsy Lido, uh, a charitable trust now. Yes. 62 metre um, swimming pool, 200 off foot pool, plus buildings. Old and knackered, the council gave up 10 years ago. And since uh, March last year, I banged in 64 grand into the bank. Or was it 66? <laughs> right. Yeah. The doors are going in one of the offices uh, by the 24th of April as cupboard doors or door. Right. Well, just as well they're being used then. <laughs> Everyone's invited. Actually, Marianne will be inviting everyone. It's uh, like the spring uh, reunion, subject to COVID and anything, and it'll be transmitted on Zoom yeah. and this, that, and the other. Uh, so you're planning, you're planning a spring reunion. Well, we're not. We're going to open a bloody door. Right. <laughs> it's the Malcolm Miller door, not the one you would have walked through, Mike, because it was gone by then. Yeah. Yeah. But Mark and I walked through it. Yeah. I have two. I have a pair. We're just going to set up one for start off with. Also, then, um, uh, doors need to be officially opened. And we'll have the yeah. local MP, Penny Mordunt, right honourable, thereupon, former Secretary of State for Defence of the Realm, who will, cu who will cut the ribbon to open the door. And that's it. OK, right. Yeah. I'll wait with bated breath. Yep. Yeah. 